Assalamu alaikum. How to stay resilient in self quarantine times? The times which were never seen before, which were never anticipated before. And of course, we are paying a heavy toll, all of us, on psychological, social grounds. The discussion and interaction is actually revolving around uh, proposing some practical tips and uh, some doable exercise in our daily lives, which may help us immensely to go through these tough times, to stay resilient, and uh, to keep the reservoirs of our psychological immunity intact until or unless life goes back to the normal. Uh, these 10 practical tips are based on some insights being shared by Public Health Department UK. As I said, the topic of today's uh, talk uh, at this interaction is stay resilient in self-quarantine, uh, 10 attitudinal and behavioral modifications. So the very first and foremost tip, consider how to connect with others. Think about how you can stay in touch with friends and family uh, through telephone, video calls or social media instead of meeting in person, whether it's people you are normally see often are connecting with old friends. See, we are exposed to so many social media platforms already. And we are also getting familiar with many virtual meeting places like Zoom and uh, Google Hangout, etc. I just want to give you an idea. Think about having a family meeting on Zoom. Think about having a family chat on uh, WhatsApp or on Skype. And uh, you will find it very uh, enabling uh, when it comes to staying psychologically resilient in wake of uh, pressurizing times that we are going through. Second tip. Help and support others. Look around. There are certain groups. There are certain ways and means owing to which you can uh, render a sport, a social sport uh, to people around you. Even if they are not around you physically, they are around you virtually. You can help them. You can make them believe that you are available. Your sport is available and uh, you can you can understand uh, the pressure, the turmoil they are going through and according to very well established facts of uh, positive psychology helping others being available and able to make others feel good makes you feel way better as compared to those who try to just stay self-contained and just uh, want to live in the silos of their own very selves another very interesting tip talk about your worries all of us are worried, I am worried, you are worried, people around us are worried. But the most important responsibility you have uh, is of your own worries and managing them. So do talk about them, do talk to your spouses, do talk to your children, do talk to your parents, do talk to your teachers, spouses, coordinators, that uh, what kind of issues uh, you are going through, what kind of fears uh, you feel uh, when it comes to your uh, current times or in, uh, in, in times to come. Uh, so uh, talking about your problems and issues and worries will help you get rid of them to a great extent. Moving on, another very interesting way to tackle your worries uh, and to stay resilient is to look after your physical wellness. Actually, at times we are caught by very conventional ideas when it comes to our physical health and well-being that until or unless we go to gym, we go to sports, we go out, it will be difficult to attain decent physical fitness uh, standard. But I must say that if you look around, you go to Google, you will find a great number of uh, interventions which may be termed as body weight exercises are the exercises which uh, don't require any equipment around you. Uh, do that in your own room, in your lounge, and if you've got some open space, maybe on your rooftop, in your lawn, uh, wherever you get some space to just move around, you will be able to uh, maintain your physical fitness. And remember that physical fitness, even if it is a 30 minutes, 20 minute walk, it helps you secrete enormous amount of endorphins, uh, which are called happy hormones. 
So in these pressing times, you certainly need a greater amount of happy hormones in your body. Moving on, look after your sleep. A few days ago, I got a tutorial recorded on just three tips for psychological immunity and this was top of them. At times, we find it very trivial matter that, okay, we will sleep four or six hours today and we will sleep uh, 10 hours or 12 hours tomorrow. But a consistent sleep pattern uh, and at least having seven to eight hours sleep in a day of 24 hours, it is essential for your uh, psychological well-being, to say the least. Next is uh, try to manage your difficult feelings. First of all, identify what are the feelings which you find difficult to deal with. And uh, you know them very well. At times, recognizing your feeling is not a big problem. Rather, after recognizing them, accepting that these are the difficult feelings and uh, you, you, you are brave enough and you are uh, uh, strong enough not to be bogged down by these uh, feelings. Uh, so this is a folly. This particular thinking pattern leads you to further frustration and unease on psychological and physical uh, levels. So I would say that what is uh, uh, inducing anxiety in yourself identify those sources it may be media it may be some particular people around you it may be uh, some sort of uh, actions uh, or activities uh, which you find yourself indulged in involved in leaving you uh, with the feelings of despair and dejection so identify them and manage those difficult feelings moving on regulate media exposure we are uh, exposed to media 24 hours news and constant social media updates can make us worried uh, to a great extent the information which you needed inevitably to stay secure safe regarding this pandemic is already with you any extra amount of time energy and attention which we are allocating to overexposure to media let me assert that it might be the most counterproductive engagement these days. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now our 24 7 schedule is changed altogether. We are coming across new requirements, a new equation of work family integration. Try to understand, just get yourself convinced with the idea that you have to devise a new routine and you have to adhere to the new routine. You have to engage yourself with new and novel kinds of uh, personal activities, as I mentioned, cooking, cleaning, uh, reading and calling a friend and uh, uh, maybe decluttering, resetting your uh, house and polishing some furniture. You can think of as many things as possible to make the best use of your time. Yes, very important. And it is also related to the previous point whereby I suggested that you have to make new routine. While making new routine, you have to set new goals as well. Any routine, any activity, any engagement without goal will not be sustainable as expected. So moving on, you have to make new routine you have to set new goals and you have to keep your mind active in this new routine and setting new goals you can do a lot of things which used to be sent to the back burner in our uh, previous uh, lifestyle for instance you can read you can write you can play games you can do crossword puzzles jigsaw or drawing all these activities will keep your mind active because it's very important that in these times of uh, physical limitations we have to let our mind explore limitlessness which it is actually endowed with and it is your responsibility to give your mind that chance to give yourself that opportunity to stay mentally as active as possible last but not the least come close to nature yes uh, we did talk about uh, some grounding techniques before uh, to manage and handle anxiety and you can further 
Google this concept of grounding techniques and you will get a lot of interesting insights about grounding techniques. But one of them is to stay very close to nature. And uh, you need to get yourself exposed to sunlight as much as you uh, can. You may get involved into some sort of gardening, even if it is a piece of, uh, let's say, uh, five to seven square meter available in uh, just outside your house. This, of course, following all the precautions which you already know, you can go out, you can have a walk in solitude in greens, in woods, and eventually it will have a tremendous impact on you when it comes to your psychological well-being and coping resilience, which we are talking about today. So ladies and gentlemen, these were very basic, primary, attitudinal and behavioral modifications, which being a psychologist, I could suggest to help you have that coping resilience in self-quarantine times. Please stay tuned and we will be coming up with further tutorials on different aspects of psychological well-being in these tough times, in times to come. You can subscribe to our channel and you can also like our Facebook page of House of Wellness Pakistan. Stay well. See you soon.